Hey, what's up guys? Eric here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all four, that's right, you heard me correctly, all four of the DC shows over at the CW. So it seems like the CW has finally released a synopsis for each upcoming season of all four properties. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna read the synopsis with you guys, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion of what I would like to see, what we kind of already know about these upcoming seasons, and then down in the comments below, you guys can tell me what you think about all of this and what you would like to see on each one of these shows this coming season. So let's start off with The Flash. And this is a kind of a short one here. Uh, this is what they have to say about The Flash season three. Blinded by anger, Barry unwittingly plays into Zoom's game and uncovers the evil speedster's true goal, to destroy all Earths in the multiverse. In the race of his life, Barry ultimately gets the upper hand against Zoom and defeats his nemesis. But, unable to celebrate victory, Barry makes a world-shaking decision and speeds back in time to the night his mother died to stop Reverse Flash from killing her, irrevocably changing his past and redetermining his future. Now, honestly, that doesn't seem like so much of a synopsis of season three that pretty much just recaps what happened at the end of season two but we know quite a bit about the upcoming season of the flash like for example we know that wally west will be donning the kid flash costume and he will have powers a la the speed force we also know he's going to have a brand new nemesis that we're not sure who it's going to be yet i'm sure we'll get more information about that as it's coming up uh, closer to the season but we know that he's getting his own nemesis we also know that everyone around barry has changed uh, pretty much he's affected everybody with his decision and we see this in all the previews for the upcoming season we also know that barry is going to start losing his memory and he's going to have to fix or at least try to fix the timeline that he has changed so what am i expecting from this season what would i like to see well first of all i would like to see them play out this uh flashpoint paradox for a little bit longer than just maybe two or three episodes i'd like to see the whole first half of the third season to be flashpoint that's what i would like to see and i'd also like to see it affect shows outside of the flash but i don't think we're going to see quite that much change across the cw properties i don't think we're going to see that but the fanboy in me would really love to see that and as far as bad guys even though the reverse flash is going to be on flash season three he does have a part in the legends of tomorrow cast and i believe he's going to cross a, a you know go across all four properties as a villain so we, he's not going to be the big bad for uh the flash but i also would not i would like them to not do a speedster villain i hope whoever it is in season three is someone who is not connected to the speed force at all i know it's really difficult because the flash is fast his connection to the speed force makes him a unique superhero but giving him you know speedster villains every single season is just rehashing the same story unless they really drastically change it up so i would like to see someone other than a speedster but let me know down in the comments below what are you guys expecting and does this synopsis tell you anything about season three that i'm missing because it really it doesn't really say much all right, so let's talk about the Arrow season five. Here's a synopsis for that upcoming season. Newly appointed mayor Oliver Queen finds himself challenged as he fights on two fronts for the future of Star City. With Diggle back in the military and Thea adamant about hanging up her hood as speedy, Team Green Arrow is down to just Oliver and Felicity, but they're no longer the only vigilantes in town. Green Arrow's public defeat of Damian Dark at the end of season four has inspired a new crop of masked heroes to step up and defend the city, though their painful inexperience makes them obstacles rather than allies in the field. The arrival of a deadly new adversary will force Oliver to confront questions about his own legacy both as mayor and as the green arrow okay so this one tells us a little bit more than the flash synopsis did and this one we know that um you know diggles in the military and uh speedy or aka thea she doesn't want to really be speedy anymore and that probably has something to do with all the stuff that happened at the end of uh season four uh, all the emotional connections she had and losing friends in the hero community um so yeah i can totally see her not wanting to be speedy anymore and this could actually be a good time for roy to come back if he could because i really enjoyed having roy back for that one episode he did a great job uh unfortunately team green arrow is down to just oliver and felicity and that seems like just more tacked on love story stuff elicity stuff which i know people get so tired of but we know she has a new boyfriend at the beginning of season five but i have a feeling that's just going to be a ploy for a love triangle um which is pretty like i said in the video where i did a you know did the whole video about that that it's basically just a ploy for this love triangle that the cw loves to do 
Um, so that's what I'm pretty much expecting from that. Uh, but it looks like we're going to have new heroes pop up, and we kind of thought that was going to happen. We know Artemis is going to be in this season coming up, and, and probably a lot other you know smaller characters in the Green Arrow uh, comics coming onto the TV show, or maybe in DC in general. Um, there's a, de a deadly new adversary that will force Oliver to confront questions about his own legacy, both as mayor and the Green Arrow. They say it at the end, so we are going to have a season big bad. One thing they did say about Arrow Season 5 is they were going to make it more down to earth and sort of get back to the roots of that street level uh superhero stuff that arrow did so well in the in the early seasons i'm still kind of skeptical about it because they've burned us in the past by telling us about all these great things they want to do and then it doesn't happen uh but you know this makes me feel a little more optimistic about it i just really hope they stay away from the heavy soap opera elements and try a little bit more to get back to making it a superhero show all right, so it's time to talk about Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. Now, I'm actually really excited about Season 2. I beat up <laughs> Legends for Season 1. It was just all over the place. The writing was very, like, spotty, and some of the plots just didn't work for me, and there was a lot of contradictions. I really hope Season 2 pulls that all together. So with the introduction of the JSA, I think we have a much more solid storyline going into season two. So I'm going to read this. It's really long. <laughs> it's my first time reading it. So excuse me if I stumble through it and screw up any names at all, because there's a lot of new names in here. So let's just read this and see what I can do and how much I butcher this. <laughs> all right, here we go. After the defeat of the immortal villain Vandal Savage and the corrupt Time Masters who colluded with him, a new threat emerges. Dr. Nate Haywood, an unconventional and charming historian, is thrust into the action upon making a shocking discovery the legends are scattered throughout time nate must find a way to rescue season one's beloved team of heroes and rogues including billionaire inventor ray palmer who has created an exosuit with the power to shrink him to minuscule size as the atom sarah lance the white canary a trained assassin professor martin stein and jefferson jacks jackson who together form the metahuman firestorm and mick rory aka heatwave a career criminal when the legends encounter the jsa that is the justice society of america in the 1940s amaya J. Wee. I think that's Jay Wee. I hope that's Jay Wee. <laughs> AKA Vixen joins the team. While the team reunites, a mystery looms the fate of former Captain Rip Hunter. Once reunited, the legends continue their mission to protect the timeline and temporal aberrations, unusual changes to history that spawn potentially catastrophic consequences. When Nate, the grandson of JSA member Commander Steel, unexpectedly finds himself with powers, he must overcome his own securities and find the hero within himself. Ultimately, the legends will clash with foes, both past and present, to save the world from a mysterious new threat. Now, this sounds really great. Like, I'm actually really excited for the synopsis, and I'm looking forward to season two of Legends of Tomorrow, because one thing season one did well was spectacle. The bigger moments within Legends of Tomorrow really worked for me. It was just the storyline sort of got hung up here and there, and it sounds like, you know, we knew we were getting Vixen, and we know it's going to be a different Vixen from the one we saw on Arrow and the one we get in the Vixen cartoon. This is a previous or an earlier version of the Vixen who has access to the totem. I'm really interested to see what she brings to the table, and it sounds like um, uh, Nate Haywood um, is going to be the person that sort of has to bring the team back together. Um, they're going to be split up all over the place, and he has to sort of collect all the people and, and bring them back together as a team um, and find out what happened to Rip Hunter. Something apparently happened that I guess we'll find out when the uh, show actually starts. And it sounds like Commander Steel is going to be the breakout hero of the team, the one that they're going to focus on as he learns how to use his powers. It all sounds really good to me. I'm still kind of curious who the mysterious new threat is, but uh, without being tied into the whole Time Masters and dealing with all the baggage that Rip brought along, I think the show is going to move a lot smoother. Also, without the Hawkman, Hawkgirl love story, I think it'll be better off. So I'm definitely looking forward to Legends of Tomorrow. Just really nail the storyline down and keep everything consistent and you're good with me. So what do you guys think? Does this sound promising to you? Uh, what are you expecting from the JSA uh, on Legends of Tomorrow? And let's finally talk about Supergirl Season 2. Now, this is a show, before I even read the synopsis, let me tell you guys my background with Supergirl. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I've been very harsh on Supergirl. I, Out of all the superhero shows I've watched on TV, this was the one I hated the most. And I rarely use the word hate but I really hated this show. I thought it was just a mindless, silly, 
uh, soap opera with Supergirl tossed in for good measure. And that's the way I felt it was, you know, the, the writers treated the show in season one. The actual science of everything that we get in The Flash, um, which makes it a very smart and witty and fun show to me, was kind of completely watered down in Supergirl. And uh, it just didn't work for me. And uh, so let's read this synopsis real quick and see what they're going to try and do with season two. It says, Kara has finally left the safety of being Cat Grant's assistant in order to figure out what she really wants to do. While as Supergirl, she continues to work at the DEO, protecting the citizens of National City and searching for Jeremiah and Cadmus. Along the way, she'll team up with Superman to battle new villains as she strives to balance her personal life uh, as a superhero. Now, here's my problem with this. <laughs> I did a whole video about my opinion about bringing Superman onto Supergirl. And even though we know he's probably going to be in two, maybe three episodes at the beginning of season two, I just think it's a bad idea, right? I think it's a bad idea. I think the best way they could have done this, and I still, I'm going to stand by this all the way up until the beginning of the season, is bring Supergirl to Earth One and completely remove her from everyone in season one. So she's the only Kryptonian on earth one in the whole universe she's the only one because once you bring superman in there's an expectation superman is the a-list dc character i'm sorry he is supergirl is secondary to superman and on a show where you want supergirl to be your your standout character the last thing you need to do is bring superman onto the show and then punk him to make supergirl look better i just think that's ridiculous I really wish that he was not on the show. I wish they would have never even brought it up. I think some weird twist of the multiverse to get her stuck on Earth-1 and, and they separated her from everybody from Season 1 would have been the most interesting thing to do with her. I, th I think they're trying too hard to hold on for the fans of CBS. I think if they, you know, they should have brought it over here to CW and just basically did a soft reboot of it by you know, stranding her on Earth-1. I still have faith that after the first couple episodes, that may happen. I'm, I'm hoping that's what happens. Because honestly, if they do not change the tone of Supergirl or tweak it a little bit, it's going to be a really painful season of rant and reviews for me. Because <laughs> I will be rant and reviewing Supergirl. Just like I do the other three shows. Like I did last season. So hopefully they tweak it and they make it better. And we end up with a show that I can actually sit through and not roll my eyes every five minutes because that's kind of where I am with Supergirl. I know a lot of you guys like Supergirl. My opinion of that show is very low. It's okay if you like it. This is just my own personal opinion. So now it's your turn. We've read all of these synopsis for these shows. We kind of have an idea what most of them are going to be doing. The Flash was really vague, but we've already gotten a bunch of news about that. So I'll forgive them for the Flash synopsis. I don't think they want to give too much away about uh, Flashpoint. And I appreciate that from them. I'm still mad we didn't get more information here, but you know I, I appreciate that from them. So what do you guys think for about each one of these synopsis for these shows? What are you expecting from the DC shows on the CW, which one is, are you looking forward to the most? Which one is your favorite? And which one is your least favorite? Which one do you not think is going to do well? I want to know all this in the comments below. Please let me know what you guys think. Once again, thank you guys for watching every single day. Make sure you like, share, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I make videos like this all week long, all month long about the TV shows and movies we love or hate. And sometimes we love and hate them both at the same time. <laughs> you never know. But that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you have a great day. Have a great week and I'll catch you tomorrow.